how he survives through this one. Stun from Zai to follow up, a purification's there. He's gonna buy a little time, he can play some Ring Around the Rosie, maybe use that Venomous Gale, but no, not gonna be enough. He does pull back three Heroes of Optic, though. <laughs> Clearly not that grand of a Magus, I'm, uh, I'm afraid. No. Not in that situation, as that Tier 2 up top does also get finished off, so. Optic finding a little advantage there. And one of the things you mentioned earlier, they're doing a great job playing around these ultimates. They know if there isn't a haunt, isn't a doom, and there's no chaotic offering, we can fight, we can be aggressive, and we can afford to take a little more risk. Well, speaking of chaotic offering, it's back right now. So a uh, little so bit of uh, maybe relaxation here. Interesting well, item choice on the Spectre and that Hood of Defiance, but I really like it here. Mitigates a lot of that magic damage. It's just such a value pickup on a hero like Spectre. Yeah, it's been a pretty nice one for the Spectres lately, ever since it's been buffed. You know, you kind of have these games where you choose between the Vanguard or the Hood, depending on what your uh, opponents have. This game, Hood looks pretty damn good. You got the Sand yeah. King, you got the Venno, even just a little bit of hate there from the Ogre. So, opting into that. Uh, still wouldn't mind uh, the old pipe on the team, but uh, they've got more important things. Posh is just feeling like a true initiator in this one. He wants the Blink Sight, as if uh, Dooming wasn't enough. Uh-huh, even more control, but we'll see some aggressive movements from Optic. They'll bump into Solo again. He has a Force Staff. This time he gets off the Offering and some Bonds. Now Haunt's been used. Can VP actually take this fight? Doom has come out already, but there's the GA. PPD going to be the first one to fall. The stolen GA is CCNC uses that Poison Nova. It's a pretty decent epicenter from Zai. A two for one thus far, but Lifesteal are not going to survive. Oh, three HP, he lives. Optic are gonna get away with this one despite having a lot of low HP heroes. VP just can't quite punish it. Yeah, even Zai, it seems, will get out there. Wow. Oh, that's a pretty solid initiation, too. The fact that they're just finding Solo like that. Super important that he's the hero. And his defensive item, the Glimmer Cape, is... Uh, I right, think he's got it's the Force Staff there. Or Sorry, uh, he didn't go for Glimmer Cape, rather, because of these sentries and everything. So the Force Staff... Not enough to save him. Like, couldn't yeah. quite get close enough. You saw he forces right into the trees after he gets gone on. And uh, just still munched on up. And then it's kind of like, should he even drop it there? It's, it's dicey. It's 50-50. Yeah. I see why VP wanted to go for it. They get off the Doom on the Life Stealer again. It feels dicey. You know, yeah. do you Doom the Life Stealer in these fights? And Some Zai situations, he really cares. Other, not so much. And yeah, Zai not only does some pretty decent damage, but also nice stun on two to prevent the chase. Yeah, and uh, so as that all goes down there, though, oh. Back in the game, set up here onto the Rubik. That Yule Scepter coming in handy, and they'll get another one down. That gold swinging back the way of Optic. Just when it looks like they're losing that footing, they strike right back and regain the momentum. And again, there's no goal in here. They know that. There's no Haunt. This is a really nice looking time to go high ground, but Haunt will be back in time because he's level 20. Right now, Ramsey's only the two minute CD. Uh, however, Rubik will still be dead by the time Roche is back up. And uh, it is scouted by the Venno Ward for one more second. Oh, they're going to miss it by about five. That's a bummer. Down bottom, Doom is trying to put a little bit of split pressure, perhaps, without the ultimate. Feeling like he can't contribute too much to this fight. No buyback available on the Rubik. There is also a Glyph for VP. They'll go ahead and use it now, trying to keep this Tier 3 topped off. The upheaval actually pretty darn annoying from Solo in the back line. Still won't be enough to save this tower. And Optic not looking to overcommit. They will get the Tier 3 and then just head back into the enemy jungle. Pasha also going to TP out off after securing that bottom Tier 2 with the help of a couple Siege Creeps. Okay, Optic now back to the Shrine. Going to take away the defensive option here for VP to TP to try and guard this Roshan. Very methodical play. And uh, all they need now is CCC to just keep leaving the uh, the little trailer bread comes behind them in these Venom Wards. Uh, maybe a smoke play being eyed up here. Uh, and yeah, okay, we do have a couple smoked up. Actually, it's just gonna be the Rubik and the Kunkus. So maybe trying to be a bit tricky here with Pasha. Chaotic offering just cooling down now. VP ready for another volley of team fight ultimates. But will they find the opening? Optic with pretty good positioning oh, on their high ground. Instead, they're gonna find the Ogre. Position five, not the target that they wanted. VP feeling a little scared. No one as well as Roger just headed back to defensive territory. Yeah, it was a very light dusting on the bottom lane from Peter though. He just went for an Ignite on the creep, so they're still pressuring with a Catapult on the tower. Actually doing a lot of damage here, but mid lane, Pasha with the BKB, jumps on the Life Stealer, does use the Doom, PPD and the Fray getting low, and there's the Chaotic Offering again. Buyback from PPD to get into this fight as the rest of Optic split. 
Zai. Zai will be the one kind of oh, left behind. He throws strikes to the high ground. The Prowlers have been awoke. And Ramses will bring down the kill. No buyback available on the Sand King. And yeah, that tier three down bottom, it goes down to about two thirds HP. Nothing to scoff at. Yeah, nothing Whoa, about oh, waves. initiation onto Pycat. It's a little too aggressive with his positioning. Does have an infest. Also gets repelled as PPD jumps in onto Roger. But now the boat comes in, connects on the ogre, and it looks like these two will fall. Optic get caught with their pants down. Is now CC and C's on the run. VP in hot pursuit. Buyback from Pycat to get into this fight, as well as a buyback on the Rubik. BKB from no one used. That golem still in the front lines. Optic have no choice but to play this defensive. It's a five on three. Three three caught by the X, Repel brings him back a little bit, but in Snare, it goes right through that magic immunity. Now the Yule Scepter, he's able to blink to the high ground. Optic feeling low on options, nothing but defensive plays as they make it to the high ground and leave this tier three for the Virtus Pro Siege. Feels like it's so difficult for them to actually use this Guardian Angel Wild. Like there's a couple times where there's like three or four heroes being gone on and three threes in the back line, but he can't seem to like figure out this angle. He's not sure when it's gonna be the most valuable and they just had no turnaround potential there. With Zai going down so early, he's so crucial in that counter initiation. They can't afford to lose him that quick. Yep. Not as much economic damage as you would think, though, with that Rubik using the buyback. Still a very small lead for Virtus Pro, but asserting their dominance there makes this Lifestealer feel a little bit more manageable. With that, Optic walking to the Roche Pit. Plenty of vision there from Virtus Pro. These little skeleton warriors, look at that. Oh my, that's one of the, the greatest uses of Ray's Dead I think I've ever seen. That's a free ward right there, Trent. Get on in there. But there is no chaotic offering. Another 60 seconds. Ramses goes in a little bit too far, perhaps. Poison Nova from CCNC, but the boat, it's helping. Ramses mitigating some damage. There's the GA. Now Pasha jumps in with his BKB. They'll kill Ramses off first. Buy back there. No haunt. Oh, he's got the haunt. He's used it already. Jumps in. CCNC will fall next. Buy back there as they bring down PPD. Optic trying to split. 3-3 three, three. will be able to make it to the high ground, but Pasha is chasing him down. Some ring around the Rosie, and the Doom is used on the Omni Knight. The Ensnare to follow up. Optic want to try to save him as Roger jumps in. I don't think there's any saving this Omni Knight. Is a triple kill for Ramses comes. This Spectre's in the front lines, and they're not slowing him down. Pycat now hexed up from Pasha. He's dead with no buyback. There are no buybacks. Omni was the last one for the Radiant. Oh, no. Now CCNC on the run. The Dagger will connect, and Ramses is sure to chase him down. He's got the defeat as an ultra kill comes out there could be a rampage on the horizon as Zai on the back line trying to pull them away but Roshan is still standing pretty healthy and Virtus Pro have found a big advantage I know Virtus Pro love their rampages but Roshan beckons got to get in that pit secure this it seems like another game of just Optic trying to force their way in feeling this pressure of what's going to come later on from Virtus Pro and denying these Aegises Oh, Every that time grab. So I mean, Such that's... an even back and forth game, yeah. and now it just takes that one big mid-game fight. 41 minutes, we're even starting to transition into the late game, and this is where Spectre just takes over. Yeah, four buybacks committed there from the Radiant side. PPD being the first one, of course, way back when he got picked. And uh, it cost him a couple, too, sure. You know, you had to lose the Ramsey's buyback. Yep. But, uh, but that's exactly how you play your Spectre. You charge in first, yep. you have that haunt available, you know buyback haunt again. It's just like having an Aegis in that situation. Absolutely perfectly done by Ramses. And now the high ground siege begins. Still two heroes in the grave, no buybacks. 30 seconds of a 5v3 Double optics catapults. tournament life on the line here. The two Cardis helping it out as the tier three goes down. Still a tier two in the top lane, so no chance for Megas here. Is a nice stun on three from Zai, still hanging on to that epicenter. They have to be a little bit cautious with only the golem. Well, we'll see. I mean, the boat, you kind of want, I guess there is still the haunt. Look but. at the control from VP, though. They don't even finish off both sets of barracks. Just take the melee, take the tier three. They say, guys, we've got control of this game. Let's not throw it away. We can find a fight later on. We've still got the Aegis in tow. Still with the cheese as well. 11K net worth, now the lead. If you're Optic now, though, it, just, it feels like you're just running so low on options. Pasha is a menace. He's blinking these fights. He's getting off nets. He's hexing people. He's dooming people. He's just the one-man disabler. Uh, kind of this entire team fight. And when he goes in like that, or when he go, or Ramsey goes in, it's just creating this nice little vacuum, essentially, where people are collapsing on top of these heroes, and then they're just going to get golems. BKB now up on the Spectre, already hard to kill. 
Feels almost impossible at this point unless they catch the perfect initiation. Also, Doom has the BOTs. Two feet, two boots. Global presence is there. Also, uh, Daedalus on the Kunkka. So no one getting closer to that point of the big time crits that are just gonna tear up that back line. And Solo now too, finds a better option. Rather than being close and having ah. to uh, escape, he's just gonna hide in the trees forever, pretty much, and blink out uh, into these engagements. It's a great item choice here, no doubt. Uh, kind of felt like that was what was missing from Zai in the previous match too. So many of these songs, like trying to use them defensively or offensively, not able to get into those back lines to uh, focus down heroes like Tasha and Solo, of course, on that Bane was uh, maybe what uh, cost them a lot of those fights. Life Stealer still desperately trying to get this MKB. That buyback really hurting him. Just feels like the Life Stealer. I wouldn't say a non-factor in these fights, but he's really not that frontline bully uh, that he would like to be. His job right now is definitely the burst potential. It is that one target we got to get on top and try and bring them down as fast as possible. Yeah, uh, it feels I like. Mean, if Optic don't start the fight with an Infest Bomb, how are they possibly going to have yeah. enough damage? And honestly, Posture's a pretty good target at this point. Uh, he's, he's quite rich, obviously. He's disabling you a lot, and he only has five armor. He will get absolutely shredded if they can get him with the Infest Bomb. But, you know, the problem is fine. It's course. a pretty big if. Yeah, he's been playing very sneaky here. That Blink Dagger is the perfect choice. Allows him to sit in the back line, get that counter initiation. Honestly, I feel like Pasha has played very well this game, not yeah. giving Optic many opportunities to catch him off guard. I mean, he's got the lowest armor in the game. <laughs> this guy will get destroyed, but it's fine. You know, didn't yeah. itemize towards it, and uh, he's been playing very well. So Aegis starting to run a little bit low on time, as that Life Stealer does indeed pick up the MKB, so his burst potential still very high. VP continuing to play pretty conservative here as uh oh pasha jumps into cc and c we'll go ahead and use the doom as ramses comes in ga gets popped bkb for ramses as well this specter is in deep but they want this kill and they'll find it no buyback on cc and c looks like that's where this will peter out at least for now bkb from 3-3 soon to expiration as he has the surprise inside the tp this is high risk high reward and it will go off not quite ready on that one so Doom had the ensnare though, so that was it was on CD. Oh, it was still on CD. Okay, yeah. all right, not as bad as I thought. Then. But still a five v four for fifty seconds. This is pretty scary, Trent. And again, Pasha with the same thing. He's got the hex to start off on Zai. No teammates nearby, so Zai might actually be able to survive this one as he bro strikes across. But hey, it's Roger, and he's got the dust. There's the ensnare, a stolen burrow strike, and this Sand King is done for. I don't think there is any way he makes it out. Another hero down. He does have buyback. Fortunately for Optic, is down in the bottom lane. They want to take this fight. Solo getting repelled pretty far. Still hanging on to that ultimate as the boat comes in, but 3-3 might be able to finish him off. Now back on the other side. Zai gets pulled back. PPD will be the first to fall. Does have a buyback there, but look how far out the Omni Knight is. I don't know if Optic can get to him. He's he does blink back. back. He's been hexed, though. A lot of lockdown. There's that BKB. No one also using his. The right clicks might just be too much. Ooh. He falls. Pycat in the front lines, but a beautiful stolen burrow strike from Roger on two. CC and C with the ultimate, but Optic are running out of resources. Three down without buyback. VP looking like the hell push, and this is it. GG from Optic. They've been eliminated, and their hopes of going straight to TI evaporate with this game as Virtus Pro move on to the next round in 2-0 fashion. Optic, you know, you have to give them so much credit. They fought so hard throughout this tournament, and then they have to go up against a juggernaut. But you know what? If you want to get to TI, you've got to earn it. Absolutely. There, was, there was no clearer way for them to try and make it going up against Virtus Pro. And yeah. uh, VP, uh, they showed up. You know, this does not look like the same team that was maybe toying around a little bit in terms of those IO picks. Not, not the same team that uh, left IO in two games a row against PSG LGD, but see the team shake hands here. Congratulations to Virtus Pro and a series well fought by Optic. Still a good run in this tournament, but obviously disappointed with the results. Still nice to see some smiles though across those faces. Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, a, a lot of respect and a lot of uh, mm -hmm. emotions. Yeah, I mean, we, these two teams. we were all a little bit yeah. cynical uh, about that draft for Optic. Difficult to execute with. They put up a good fight. You got to yeah. give them that.
Well, I mean, in terms of like what this team's been great at and what people have given a lot of credit for, it feels like a lot of that comes from the draft, doesn't mm -hmm. it? You know, so yeah, that's when true. the draft doesn't look good, that's not a very good sign for Optic. No, definitely not. But with that said, it's been a pleasure to cast this tournament. We're going to hand it over back to the panel to see what they thought. Yeah, thank you so much, Sayori and Trend, and indeed, Virtus Pro 2.0 Optic Gaming. That means for Optic Gaming, their TI8 Direct Invite Dream is dead. Don't worry, though. There will be qualifiers, and they will be one of the teams invited to the qualifiers because they're one of the few teams in North America that haven't shuffled their roster. So at least they don't have to go through opens, unlike uh, two of my panelists here, Sunspan, unless you're planning on making a run for it with uh, some you open know what? team. I had a Counter-Strike career. I retired a long time ago. All right, all right. Never even tried for Dota. They just lost, Cheever. Yes? <laughs> you had to rub salt, like, right <laughs> into the wound? Mm. No, I no. I think Optic Gaming is, is a really good team. I think they are going to make it out of the qualifiers. Yeah. Especially because now, of course, you're going to need three spots for an A. Um, proving that by far they are the <laughs> strongest region. I think, I, don't, I think if they even have one spot for an A, Optic will make it out at the moment. I yeah, would make I that agree. call. I agree. They have looked... Uh, I'm not, I'm not so sure. They got to travel all the way back to play qualifiers. I think there's a big advantage for teams that get to sit at home, relax. You mean study? EG and Storm that are still here? <laughs> what do you mean? We'll have to f did, did, did EG they and back? Storm, they're still here, right? Yeah. Yes, I've seen because this is a place where you can scrim. But you have to fly back. You get two days break before opens. At least Optic comes back, have six days before they play in regionals. Anyway, let's talk That's about true. this game. Yeah. You got time to recuperate. I mean, they do. The, the point I want to bring up is actually going to be right up here in the replay. This 30 minute 30 team fight. VP TP's four heroes to the tier two and mm -hmm. immediately takes a fight, initiating on the life sailor with the doom right here. No other team in Dota is going to make this play. Like, I really want to stress just how incredible this was. They get the doom on life sealer, immediately kill Omni Knight. They barely let CC and C escape 100 HP on the TP out. But like, that's such an incredible play. Like, they not only defend the Tier 2, you get this huge fight, and that's what allows them, and it buys the time to, like, continue. And eventually, you know, Spectre wins you the game, but I stand by. No other team in Dota is TPing four heroes top. We see this all the time with uh, every fight, pretty much. Doom just goes on Lifestealer. He's got the, uh, the troll creep, so he just breaks the Lincoln, dooms him, and then he just has to run away. So you can't really win team fights like this. Yep. And, uh, yeah. It, it was a very hard game, going late game. Yeah, it just felt like the whole game, like, oh, they have a Spectre. It's just like this this clock that yeah. that Optic Warlock has to Spectre. think about. Yeah, exactly. It's just pretty pretty filthy stuff. Even the, the Warlock Kunkka was a pretty disgusting combo yeah. a couple times this game as well. It's just so much damage. And uh, I, at a point, it just felt inevitable. Like, Is there a better no buyback hero in the game than Spectre? I don't think so. I love, that was like, really, we, really nice. Weaver, maybe. We were watching it, right? Well, if you time lapse back into no HP, it's not good. We've seen, yeah. we've seen Envy do that a couple times. <laughs> does not make the look good. Does not look that good. It's a risk, no doubt. No, we, we were all watching downstairs. We were seeing Spectre just f battling at the pit. And you're like, okay, he is buyback con. Yeah. Like it's he's coming back. Like you can tell he wants to die in this yeah. scenario. Yeah. yeah. And and Optic burns so many spells. All of a sudden, he just immediately right. he's back in the fight. And the only other thing I would want to touch on is uh, I love the Optic. They utilize three heroes with 90 GPM talents: Omni, Ogre, and uh, Venomancer. Mm -hmm. Problem is, Doom gets that level 15, bonus 150 Devour Gold, so effectively he's getting 300 gold if he eats off cooldown per 80 seconds, which is like 225 per minute. Yeah, Optic gets 270, but Peter's spending all that gold on wards. <laughs> you don't need wards. You do it, uh, well... <laughs> You needed a miracle to win this, this game. I love this This is great. Yeah, yeah I, great I, look, I, I had to write this down, okay? <laughs> All right. You know what? It is, uh, we are the going to have the pleasure of uh, actually talking to someone from uh, Verge Pro right now in our post-game interview. I think uh, we have a connection to, uh, to no one. Hello. Hi. Hey, there Hi. you are. Congratulations on your series, are you, are you on the first series of the day anyway, because you're going to have another one later today. How are you feeling? We were pretty tired, I think. I mean, Good. it was a close game mm -hmm. from Optic Gaming. Did you, how seriously did you take this out of curiosity? Uh, what does this yeah. tournament mean to you? Uh, <laughs> it's a practice before TI, and of course it's a major. So we, we, we want to win it. Um, it looked like uh, Ramses was drafting for you guys. Uh, and could you talk a little bit about that? We just want to change something uh, before the TI. 
to mm -hmm. maybe understand some other things for our team. We talked on the panel how the mid matchup is really important that CNC does not solo die in that lane. You did manage to kill him twice, so what do you think about the matchup? How hard was it to play against CCNC in the mid? Uh, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> Something else we talked about on panel a lot, about 10 minutes worth of conversation, in fact. Was there any concern for the Optic Techies coming out this game? Or uh, any game? I'm not sure. <laughs> you should ask PPG, I think. From your perspective, though, how about you guys? I hear Roger's been practicing quite a bit. Yeah, um, maybe some someday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're playing again later today, and it's going to be either Secret or Vici Gaming. Do you have a preference, or do you know? Do you think who's going to be the stronger team there? Uh, no, I have no preference. Uh, I don't know who will win, actually. No, you think it's 50-50? Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you for uh, for taking the time. I know you're going to have a long day ahead. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you again in a couple of hours. Thank you. Thanks, no one. Uh, that, of course, was no one from Virtus Pro. Victoria is here, but uh, not done for the day. We can bring up the brackets as uh, Virtus Pro move forward, and they're waiting for their opponent. It's either Secret or Vici, and apparently they don't care. They'll yeah. beat whoever comes I in their I way. I want to I mean, hear their conversations in-game to see if he talks more than that. He does. On he does. the team, he does. We Have you watched him scream? <laughs> I've seen him scream, but I, I feel like maybe he's saying the same five words like in every interview he ever no. gives. He's just right. cold-blooded, man. I mean, I guess. he's not trying to gloat. He just destroyed an yeah. entire continent. I mean, <laughs> That's a what's good he going to do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, they're so good. I think they've only lost to LGD. Correct. Like, in the last, what, like three months? It feels like there's only one team that can stand against them. And again, you know, the, you know even Peter's tweeting, like, hey, mm -hmm. give us Wisp, because that's Please. the game to LGD. And mm -hmm. they picked six unique heroes in two games, and they beat them. But, yep. I mean, VP, they're just so good. And the drafting, I mean, I don't know how much time we have to talk about, but you could run a clinic on just that game alone. There's literally too much to go over. Well, we can look at the scoreboard still uh, and uh, see how everybody did this game. I mean, no one, or of course, in this Kunka, 10, 2, and 19. I have to say, PyCat doing the most damage on this team with a Venomancer, that's pretty impressive. It was, uh, it was a nice talk, life stealer. What did I say? You said Venomancer, oh, but sorry. that is very impressive. Do more, more damage than, than, than a Venomancer. How is that, that is even possible? I don't even but know. I want to know that. That's you got without a repel. radiance or anything like that. Dude, yeah. uh, what I love about VP is how seamlessly they integrate other people's strategies and then play them better. They mm. just took this Warlock Spectre from Fnatic. The Kunkka was meta for a little bit, and now I think no one might have just the best in the world. The way he's using Cleave and positioning within team fights is just amazing. And let's be real, Ramsey Spectre, Envy Spectre, why are you even comparing it to <laughs> Too it's savage. It's, it's, it's a specter, though. About, you know. It's a specter. That's the area that you can't really make big plays with, but honestly. Yeah. yeah. And we can die as well in buyback. Doesn't take that much skill. Like, this game was definitely no one doing some massive plays, solo killing mid twice, yep. doing some really big cleave. So uh, he has to be the MVP. Yep. And okay. I would 100% agree. I think VP is a scarier team when they're utilizing Kunkka or Disruptor. One of these, it's super low cooldown high reach spell you always find the catch that you need gets you that extra kill when you win a team fight and whenever you combo that with the doom i mean it's just so simple you win a fight just because you're using this big cooldown you get that extra bonus kill and eventually ramsey specter just takes the game yep game over just like Easy. that vp too good yeah that was uh that was optic out i mean any final words on uh on optic eliminated here Still top six, still taking home $90,000, by the way. I mean, if it was any other tournament, they would be, oh, that's pretty good. But obviously, TI was in their, in yeah. their grasp, and they weren't quite yep. able to get to it. So they're going to definitely feel disappointed about this. One of the teams that I think is hurt the most from top four versus top eight receiving points because they've been so close so many times. That's actually but, a really good point. Yeah. But in the end, they tried so hard, they got so far, and it doesn't really matter. And with that, uh, we are going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Secret versus Vici Gaming. Next, Team Secret versus Vici Gaming.